Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another Sri COVID-19 call. This is our daily global conversation about what's happening around the COVID-19 crisis. We don't talk about the news, but we talk around the news and also use it as a chance to learn, to share, to connect with the world. We may be physically distant, but we can be socially close. And that's why we are doing these shows. This is show number 39, which means we've been doing this for 39 straight days. Every show has been more important than anything I could have imagined in terms of connecting with the world. And I'm so grateful to everyone who has joined us right now. Please go to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Find my post and hit share or retweet or just tag a friend. Somebody will benefit from this conversation. Today, we have a very special show for you because it's part of my work on something series. The idea is during this shutdown, during the lockdown, it, unless you're an essential worker, you will find that you have a little bit of extra time on your hands. Why not work on a digital project? And so we have a session today all about how to use Twitter better. So we're calling it our Twitter tutorial, the work on something series. And I have two fabulous friends who are going to be joining me in a minute. Marcy Alberherf, who's at Hey Marcy, and Susan McPherson, who's at Susan MCP1. So we're so glad that they're both with us. You'll get a full introduction and a connection to them. I'm also learning how to work on my YouTube channel and how to learn how to do YouTube better. So please go to my YouTube and connect with me there. Subscribe so that I can learn how to use YouTube better. The other thing I said I want to work on is how to use Canva better and how to do design better. So I'm going to show you, this is the new upgraded look and feel of my announcement cards. And this is what it looked like last week before I got my tutorial. And uh, here is what it looked like. Um, you can see this is very good information, but it doesn't resonate online the way this does. And that's one of the lessons for every format, you have to think about how it looks online, even though this is my instinct as a journalist to pack it full of useful information, no one will read it unless it looks like this. And especially online and especially because people are also looking at all of this on their phones. And so you need to be keeping that in mind as well. And so we're gonna talk about Twitter. Please tag your friends. Anybody who has a Twitter idea, wants to share it, please, Please share it and we will come to you and give you a chance to, uh, we'll read that out onto the show, which will be fun. And I also learned that even this kind of format is not good enough if you want to do a YouTube thumbnail. So for YouTube, we went even more dramatically sparse with this kind of look. And that's what you need to do on YouTube is have it very sparse. So again, look at the evolution from this to this and this, those you need three, you need two of those if you want to work effectively online. And my design tutor is the great Shirsti Heber, who was my intern at the Met, went on to become a designer for Vogue India, and now works here in the US. And we're just so glad to have her with us. And also my friend Andrew Lee, who is such a great designer and uh, just my digital mentor. And we named our company Digi Mentors after him. So let, before we bring in everybody, we want to tell you that we have a sponsor who we want to thank, and that's the Girl Scouts of Greater New York. Help us donate 100,000 boxes of cookies to healthcare workers. Go to bit.ly slash gscookies1. You can take a screenshot or type that in, bit.ly slash gscookies1, and make a donation. And the money will go to buying boxes of cookies that are donated to healthcare workers at oh. hospitals. So by making a donation, you're supporting three things. You're supporting the healthcare workers, the Girl Scouts of Greater New York, and you're supporting this tiny show so that more people will support us and we'll be able to pay our producers. This ad was paid for by an anonymous third party donor. How kind of them to do that. Please donate at the Girl Scouts website, bit.ly slash gscookies1. And I'll put in the link into the, uh, into the Facebook feed so you can see it there as well. And we do take sponsorships and this is our very reasonable, very inexpensive pricing on sponsorships. We 
want people to be able to sponsor small businesses, or maybe you have a nonprofit you want to give a shout out to. Maybe you want to do a marriage proposal. Maybe you want to do a birthday shout out. All of that you can do here. Very inexpensive. Just email me, sri at sri.net. We want as many people to benefit from this as possible. And I'm so grateful to the folks who have sponsored us. Bruce Springsteen says he'll never forget the first $5 he got to perform a song. And I feel the same way when I got uh, a little bit of money from Tim Sohn. He'll say it's not a little bit of money. It was a lot of money from Tim Sohn to sponsor one of, uh, to be a sponsor of my show. And so I'm so grateful to Tim. Let's see who's joining us, including Tim. There you go. Hi, Sri Srinivasan. Thumbnails are so important. He says, love the new look. Twyla says, change your photo. Always people are going to jump in and help. Steve says, I love the new YouTube thumbnails. I'm also thinking of streamlining my Parks Alliance read-along thumbnails. Sonali is tuning in from LA. Fascinating. And uh, Kimberly says, fascinated by Marcy's work with Encore.org. I imagine she has some heart-rending and heartwarming stories to share about our Encore community and how they're coping with this crisis. And we have a guest from Hilton Head Island. Diana is here. And please, please keep sharing, connecting, tagging your friends on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn is another place we're all hanging out. We'll just do a couple of more shout outs and then we will come to our guests. Jonathan's watching from the East Village and Carla Baranakis is watching. Hello from New Jersey, where everything is legal in New Jersey. We learned that from Hamilton, except going outside without a mask. Thank God you have a governor we can trust and a governor who speaks <laughs> the truth. And Jonathan says, on this day, 1964, the first jar of Nutella was released upon an unsuspecting universe. Oh my God, that connection, folks, is that Jonathan and I have a, had a date to go to the Nutella Cafe, which is near NYU. We never made it, my fault. And now we hope the store is still there when we come back. And Joe Appio is watching, and Joe has suggested some great guests. We're going to have a mayor, uh, not mayor of New York, but a mayor of a wonderful town who's going to join us in a show in the days and weeks ahead. Corey Cohen is going to be joining us. Corey is a a dog expert and he was on our show before and just really happy uh, to have all of you here. All right, let's get our guests. They've been very patient and let me bring them on board. Here we go. And here are Marcy and Susan. Hi folks. We want you all to follow both of them, please. Let me give you their Twitter handles so that you can follow them. Their Twitter handles are at Hey Marcy and at Susan MCP1. First, let me ask you the question I ask all my guests. Where are you? How are you? And what are you doing? How are you doing? What are you doing? So we'll start with Marcy and then go to Susan. I'm kind of around the corner from the Nutella Cafe near NYU that you just mentioned. Um, I live near Union Square. I'm sheltering at home with my husband and my French bulldog, Sinatra. And um, I'm safe and I'm well. And um, a lot of my work happens virtual, even in, in uh, non-extreme situations. So in some way, our team was um, kind of used to a lot of what this feels like, uh, the, the working virtually part, at least. And, and that's great. Well, tell us uh, a little bit about Encore.org. Sure. So we're a nonprofit, a national nonprofit. We've been around for 20 years. And we've been in the in this business of reframing and um, aging and inter and the intergenerational opportunity. So most of our work right now is about supporting leaders and innovators and elevating new ideas and new models to bridge the generational divide. So um, you'll see on my Twitter picture, I have a picture of the book I wrote, uh, the Encore Career Handbook, How to Make a Living and a Difference in the Second Half of Life. So Shri knows me through a lot of the work we did. Uh, that Sri was a part of to change the story of what it looks like to age today and to um, empower people as we age to be contributors and, and have social impact in society. And increasingly, we see that as an intergenerational opportunity. What's the role of older people collaborating with younger people for social change and to create a better world? So we call that all living gen to gen, generation to generation, which is the big focus of our work right now. So we, we, love, we love that. We yeah. love uh, thank you. And we should do our own a show just about the work that Encore does. I had the privilege to work on some of the programming a decade ago when being, you know, the second the Encore part is about the second act and people having a chance to do more, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember 
when I when you signed me on, I was in my 30s maybe, and I thought, oh, that's so far away. But uh, now it's very close, and uh, <laughs> I, I I'm just so grateful for the work that you, Marcy, have done and your leadership in our community of New York journalists slash tech folks slash do-gooders. And your book was really your first book was all about that part of uh, life and how people have different careers and they you call them slash careers, right? Right. You are the consummate slash tree. You were in that book. <laughs> Thank you. And and so just we we'll just want to remind people how they can find you. You're Hey Marcy, very easy to find on Twitter. And the organization is Encore Org on Twitter. Encore Org on Twitter. And on the website is Encore.org on, on the web so they can everybody can find them. And even your choosing your name and all of that we'll get to because I have some questions around that. But I want to say hi to Susan. Uh, Susan, so great to see you. Same questions Hello. for you. Who are you? Sure, sure. Well, I'm Susan McPherson, and I am the founder and CEO of McPherson Strategies. So we are a consulting firm that focuses on the communications of social impact and corporate responsibility. I am, um, it sounds so funny, sheltering in place in my home in Brooklyn Heights, um, solo with my dog, Phoebe. And I was joking earlier that we are probably on the verge of getting a divorce. We're acting like an old married couple, sick of one another because it's all we see. Um, but nevertheless, I um, m luckily my company has not missed a beat because for seven years my entire team has worked remotely. So for us, that you know that at least was one point of normalcy. But um, you know we're we're. Let, literally just working around the clock to make sure that our clients are are feeling are feeling empowered to be able to uh, share the social good that they are doing right now in a real authentic and meaningful way because we're living in a world today where you know not just NGOs I mean we, NGOs are extraordinarily valuable but both nonprofits business government faith based institutions are all needed right now more than ever. And what do your clients? Uh engage with you around exactly? Um, well, it can be anything and everything around the communications or the marketing and messaging of their social impact to either internal audiences. Um, you know, we've worked over the years with Dell and Salesforce, Tiffany and Co Foundation, Cognizant Corporation, but also NARAL, the Women's Philanthropy Institute, um, and basically helping these organizations reach their targeted audiences with the messages that they are trying to get out into the world or in turn to a targeted audience and earn media digital social um obviously twitter and facebook and all the rest and linkedin are, are very very important to us so and just one other thing years ago um 2010 actually i started um csr chat on twitter which was a way to start a community on twitter to get people talking about corporate social responsibility. And it followed me up until a year ago. <laughs> and I was like, can't keep it up anymore. Yeah, and I hope you, you've you handed it over to some great folks, and which is what happens, right? You yeah. don't have to run everything forever. No, 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 no. Generations exactly. of people step up and, uh, and carry on the good work. We want to uh, remind everyone to follow Susan, and she's okay. Susan MCP1 on Twitter. And she also has a great new show. Tell us about it. Sure. Um, well, we decided about a month ago um, the best way for our firm to give back is to showcase uh, on these short Facebook Live videos twice a week um, and give the, the, the attention um, to the leaders that are stepping up right now. So we started with UPS and we are now booked all the way through July featuring the likes of Verizon and Sesame Workshop and ifundwomen.com. Um, today, I interviewed the CMO of Nextdoor. Friday, I'm meeting with the, uh, an executive, a major executive from Facebook. Um, we have Dell, HP, Microsoft, etc. And these are 10 minute, 10 to 15 minute um, video chats. It's called the McPherson Memo Live. And our goal is really just to put some positivity out into the world. I love Thank that. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank I just want to show you. everybody that I have my Twitter tie on. My plan is to that. not wear a tie <laughs> ever, but uh, for the show. And there's a tie that my friends got me, including Liz Barad Wright, 
and uh, and uh, Linda Bernstein, and so I'm grateful to them for that tie. And the shirt sort of matches the Twitter colors. Uh, so uh, let's do this. Let's talk about Twitter. I'm going to ask each of you first to kind of tell us your own Twitter journey and why it is that you uh, thought that this we should be doing this topic uh, in terms of working on something and really trying to up our Twitter game. Uh, let's start with you, Marcy. Okay. So first of all. Um I've been on Twitter a really long time, uh, but I didn't uh, I didn't get active on Twitter for a little while. So um, I joined in 2007. I don't know when Twitter started, but I'd heard about Twitter because a friend of mine, Tony Stubblebine, worked at Twitter. I think he was like the 17th employee of Twitter, and his partner, partner Sarah Milstein, who tweets Shree, you know her. Um, Sarah and Tony kept on egging me on to get on this thing called Twitter, and um, I, I didn't pay any attention to it for a while, and they used to just have private conversations with each other about like going to the movies and having lunch, and, and it was through one weekend of visiting them in California that I, they taught me a little bit more about Twitter, and I realized, wow, this could be really, really valuable for sharing information, for connecting with people. I also started to see that it's where all the media people were, and being a media person myself, I realized this is where our people were, and people uh, trying to uh, communicate for good, which is a big passion of mine. I chose the name Hey Marcy because that had been my email handle and it was my website when I was a freelance journalist. Uh, my, my last name can be a little unpronounceable, kind of like Yushri. So I went with Hey Marcy as a friendly way of uh, kind of making people remember who I was on Twitter. So um, that's how I got started. And, and I have over the years been a person who's brought a lot of other people to Twitter and taught a lot of people on how to use Twitter, taught a lot of the people on our team at Encore how to use Twitter. And we regularly host workshops. And the reason I, I suggested this to Sri right now is that recently my mom saw a tweet of mine and didn't really know how to access it and was wondering what she was doing wrong. And then just the next day, um, a friend who was writing her first book told me she needed to get on Twitter. And I said, wow, I think this is a good time to start um, to pitch the idea to Sri to maybe doing something for a broader audience. And then I also realized that I may not be uh, as big an expert as I used to be. I used to know everything about Twitter. And now I'm really eager to learn a lot of what I don't even know about how Twitter has evolved. And there, therefore, I, I find myself going to Sri yet again. Oh, uh, thank you. And you're, you're, you do such great work on Twitter. So let's break down your Twitter account a little bit and talk about your kind of philosophy of Twitter, how you use it, yeah. what you do with it, and then we'll bring in Susan as well. And it's always fun, by the way, and I'm sure Susan will agree, to like critique other people's tweets, right? Because it was not us, that we're, but it'll we'll turn the tables on uh, Susan uh, after we do Marcy, and then maybe if we have time, we get to me as well. But let's start with Marcy and looking at her, some of her tweets, and just walk through as I kind of, um, you know, slide the, just let's look at, let's say that last three tweets and you give us your sure. feedback on those or, or how you are doing them and what you're doing with them. So go ahead. I'm on a dating show. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'll start with actually my pin tweet because I actually learned about the idea of pinning tweets from you, Shri, at one of your social media weekends. And I chose, uh, I left an article up there for a while ago um, that was written um, in the Washington Post about a an intergenerational clothing swap that I do a couple of times a year with my mom. And Susan's been there actually. Yep. <laughs> we, we host this this uh, this swap where we have had people from aging from like age eight to age 80 who come together to spend a day and hang out with each other and uh, trade clothes. And it started actually in the last re recession. It was called the recession clothing swap. And it's coming back in vogue uh, when we can get together. I'm excited to do that again. But the reason I put that there is that um, it feels really nice to have a picture that has my mom in it on my Twitter account. I'm a big kind of believer in work-life blending, but it also is really what Encore stands about, stands for, this idea of forging intergenerational connections. So it's a, an article that serves double duty and I think introduces a people to a lot of what I believe in. I, I think that's brilliant and I cannot tell you how few people use pin tweets correctly. The idea is that you pin it there so that people who come to your site uh, or come to Twitter don't have to scroll through to find out what's important to you, what is of interest to you, who you are. 
And uh, so kind of you to share a lot of my stuff. I can see myself there. But <laughs> this is your chance to control, and it's part of the branding. You know, we'll uh, we'll break down the branding on this part of the of, of Twitter, but we just want to look at your tweet first. So this idea of the pin tweet is brilliant, and and I think you you right. It just serves that purpose. And if you can get your mom into anything that you do, that's always extra and and great. So Susan, do you have a comment on this? Others will go to the next one. I you know what I couldn't. First of all, Marcy is so authentic in everything she does, and her Twitter feed reflects that. But I think she this brilliantly captures not only her personal big heart, but the 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 the, the essence of the goodness of Encore. So it's a, it's a real um, authentic presentation. And I also love that my classmate from grad school, <laughs> Columbia Journalism, Tara Barampour, is in your tweet, and uh, she is amazing. And you can see how she spelled out who she is very clearly. That's part of the point we're going to make when we break down Twitter bios. So uh, that's great. Let's go to another tweet here. This was promoting. So this is the idea. When you see something, right? So here, I could just I could like this tweet, or I could retweet it. And I have two options, retweet without a comment or retweet with a comment. When you retweet with a comment, you're making it more obvious why you are sharing it. And here, mm -hmm. this is really important. Look what she did. She retweeted this with a comment. Coming up at 4.30, add it in the comments, right? So we know she's in it. Otherwise, people may be just scrolling by and not even notice that she's in, in the photo, right? So that kind of always thinking from your audience's point of view is really important. We have some great tips that have come in, including one from the tweeting goddess. And I'll that's her Twitter <laughs> handle. We'll, we'll show you that tweet in a little bit. But uh, Marcy, let me get you to reflect on this next tweet we're looking at. Sure. So um, this is a really important one for two reasons. So I tweeted an article that was published this morning um, by Mark Friedman, my, the, the founder, um, CEO of Encore.org, as well as a dear friend of mine. And he co-authored a piece with John Gompertz, another dear friend of mine who used to be the president of Encore. And uh, they published this piece about um, how we need a social stimulus plan in addition to the economic stimulus plan that we're all um, hearing about. And um, I wanted to show something very intentionally today, which is that's a threaded tweet. Another trick that I learned from Shri at Social Media Weekend and um, Encore, um, Anshul Dar, who um, I'm sure you also know Anshul, decided to do a threaded tweet to, to promote this story. And when you do a threaded tweet, it's not just one tweet. You get to call out in a series of subtweets a bunch of key points or quotes or elements from the story. And it's also a great way to tag a lot of the other people who are in the story. So I decided to... Um, to, to retweet the threaded tweet about that piece because I thought it would really give you give people a sense of what it was because sometimes we know people don't read the whole article and it's a way it's also an interesting trick I think if you were this one isn't but if you were tweeting an article that's in a paywall I bet you could pull out a few quotes that let people see an article that they would otherwise have to have only have access to uh, with a paywall absolutely this is these are great tips and I love threads, and I think threaded tweets have great potential for all of us to do better storytelling, because in the end, that's what we're trying to do. So please uh, go in and look at the Twitter thread that she just described. I also just retweeted the thread, so all of it is together. I've done some epic threads. I've done a 200 post thread <laughs> on careers and job loss that has had a million plus impressions. Wow. I've done uh, I've done one on every one of my trips from a certain point two or three years ago. I just do, okay, I'll just say epic travel thread or just travel thread and then just do it. And one of the things that I don't think enough people understand, uh, Marcy, is that Twitter is not just for broadcasting to the world and getting a million people to see it. I often do Twitter for myself so that I can find my things that are interesting to me. And so yeah. to me, your personal archive, as well as what you hope, some of it does, which is go to the world and connect with the world and all of that. But not, let's not forget that. I think that's one of the mistakes that people make, and we'll talk about mistakes. Let's do one more for Marcy, and then we'll go to Susan. And uh, here we go. This one is. Uh, this is just. A, this happens all the time on Twitter. There's, if you scroll down right below that, the tweet um, 
is from an author, Nama Koster, who I vaguely know. I met her once at a Girls Right Now event where I used to serve on the board. And uh, she was looking for an editor to publish a piece. And I, I think it sounded like a really worthy topic for a piece. And I know a lot of editors in my network. So I saw that this morning and I retweeted it, hoping that an editor might respond to her because these friends of hers, um, a doctor who had to cancel a wedding due to COVID is trying to place a, an essay. And uh, that's a way to just kind of uh, do a favor for someone, uh, share your network with someone else. And that's, that's also really important. The other thing I wanna show everybody is that what you're, what you're seeing is when people go to an account, let, let me show you this. I'm gonna unfollow Marcy, which I would never do in real life, but I'm following her, unfollowing her, so that I can show you what happens when you follow Marcy. So I'm just gonna follow her like that. And then look who they suggest. They suggest interesting people uh, to to me based on what Twitter knows about her. So that's a great trick that all of you can try is look at someone else, unfollow and then follow you. So you see what does Twitter think you do? What kind of work does Twitter think you do? And that's what's so interesting about this and a good way to judge how well Twitter knows you. So that's something I recommend everybody do as well. Thank you, Marcy. So we're gonna uh, check out what, uh, what Susan's doing on Twitter. And first, Susan, tell us your journey with Twitter. Wow, it, it, I started at similar time as Marcy back in 2007. I was working for PR Newswire at the time and I was running um, services for CSR professionals and I was tasked with creating, get this, an online trade show for mm -hmm. corporate oh, wow. responsibility because PR Newswire at the time was owned by United Business Media, which also owned TechWeb and major trade shows. And they were developing a virtual trade show capacity. And I laugh now because here we are back in this world of virtual conferences. So I got on Twitter to find out who the leaders were in CSR so that I could invite them to be speakers at this kind of quote unquote virtual trade show. And it led me down, you know, so many little rabbit holes, but it literally got me to actually get to know all the early CSR corporate responsibility leaders who were on Twitter at the time, whether it was um, Suzanne Fallander at Intel and Dave Stangus at Campbell Soup and Timothy McClyman at, at American Express. And, it's interesting because you know they've all become dear friends over the years, but this was the beginning then. And um, fast forward a couple of years to 2010, that is when I had the um, the wherewithal to create the CSR chat. But CSR chat came about because I was then at then went to Fenton, which is a communications firm, and we had to do a proposal um, on to win a engagement around conflict minerals and what um, you know companies could be doing together to work together just the halt the, the, the rapid spread of, of just the whole conflict mineral industry and so I thought well let's just ask the Twitterverse so I put out a tweet and said you know who has information and all of a sudden all these people started answering and then at the end of this 15 minutes somebody said to me when are you going to host another one so it was like the first kind of journey into how I found Twitter to be very effective and more on the listening side and the research side than on the, um, you know, the bully pulpit side. And over the years, I mean, I, I've had so many, I always say, and Marcy knows this, I've lived nine lives um, and this is probably the 10th. Um, but I have always been a connector. Um, I go by the title Serial Connector, and I have a book um, coming out next March with um, uh, McGraw-Hill called The Lost Art of Connecting. And my, you know, in, in addition to listening and hearing um, and, and showcasing the work of others, which is my passion, I see Twitter as one of the most effective um, and essential means with which to connect people and, and listening to Marcy and listening to um, Sri and, and getting to know you both over the years. Clearly you are communicators, connectors, and you get joy out of that. So um, the, the, the one advice I've always shared with people about Twitter though is think of it as a dinner party. 
when you have 12 people sitting around a table, if one person's doing all the talking, guess what happens? No one listens. So we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. We should listen twice as much as we speak. And I find that that in tweet tweeting that that can be more effective. Um, so, and that's why it's easier sometimes just to showcase other people. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I love that. And let's uh, we're going to just show some of the comments, and then we're going to go into a couple of your tweets, Susan. Yes. Sonali says Bruce Springsteen went to the same Freehold, New Jersey high school as she did many years prior because I talked about Bruce at the beginning. Uh, Catherine says, wonderful to connect and share. Thank you for being here. Nadine says, hello from Sweden. That's awesome. Please hit share, tag. Uh, I'm usually on much later in the day and so it's hard for my European friends to join us. Pratiban says, hello. And Twyla says, did you, oops, sorry. She says, uh, did you tell Sri my suggestion to you, Tim? It made a difference. And uh, so now mm -hmm. says, I love your enthusiasm. Thank you. You've got to amp it up when you're doing these uh, webcasts because otherwise you're just going to be a, a, a downer. As a mom of a GS, happy to hear of their outreach. Girl Scout, that's right. Girl Scouts, uh, we love, and I should tell you, I have this unusual connection to the Girl Scouts. I actually spoke at the Girl Scouts National Conference, tech conference, in uh, about five, four or five years ago. My team and I went down and did social media workshops. And there were no Girl Scouts there. This was all the leadership, all the CTOs, CIOs, and others from all the tech, all the uh, Girl Scout councils around the country. And it was in, in Savannah where Girl Scouts are based, or at least were based. Uh, someone may know the answer to that. Someone can Google that and correct me. Uh, watching from Toronto. Hi, friends. And Steve says uh, that um, he says something nice about my sponsorships. Thank you. Sheila Kendrick, check out this Twitter tutorial. Yes, and this is all archived on my YouTube, as well as on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And so you can see the archives there. Please subscribe to my YouTube so that you can see it. Had no idea how to tag or Twitter uh, or use Twitter. Are we going to learn how to do that today? Yes, and we're going to walk through a few things. And I'm going to show you as much as we can in the limited time we have. But we're also going to give you guides to some great uh, tutorials that will help you with that. And you will see there'll be some good ideas there. And Vandana uh, says that she and Rose are live tweeting. And they are tweeting out some really good uh, uh, good tools and guides. So you should be looking at theirs. And Tim is uh, connecting with all his friends. It's just so great to have everybody here. And our leads at Nutella Cafe, we can only dream. and But we will keep dreaming. And Paula says that I'm sorry I can't join you. But here are some thoughts from Twitter I shared with Sri earlier today. There are more than observations. The more observations than tips as a specific tip, Twitter should be a two-way street. I know that's basic, but don't keep spreading your stuff or your client stuff without engaging with the people you want to read it. Anyway, here's the post. So there's your answer. There's a, a post, a link. Paula is on my team. We do incredible uh, journalism and conversations online, and a lot of that is around social. So please check. And Spin It Social loves the name Sinatra for your dog. Uh, let's let's do a dog uh Bake Off, the names are Sinatra, Tara, and? Phoebe. Phoebe, OK. So we'll, uh, somebody can vote on those three names. Tara? I think Sinatra wins. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> my, my I'm, niece, not, I'm, I'm biased. <laughs> my uh, niece is named Phoebe after Phoebe on Friends, you know, Friends, a second generation oh, sure. of Friends. Sure, so. sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, Honored to have worked with Encore Org and their phenomenal Hey Marcy. That's great. Sahili says, you have too many good ties for that plan, Sri. Uh, thank you. And uh, and such an all-star team. And Sri, thank you. This is great. And Rebecca says, what software are you using to share your screens like this on Facebook? Looks great. So we use a tool called StreamYard that has the ability to uh, take social, uh, I mean, take the feed and put it out onto multiple platforms. And unlike a Zoom call or any of this, let's ask Susan, Susan, wh uh, what did you have for lunch today? Me? Oh my God, what did I have for lunch? I can't even remember. <laughs> uh, so just that, right? You saw how I was able to zoom into her? Yes. And, and pull that up. So we're going to do a StreamYard tutorial. Early dementia, right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you probably are not eating, which is what happens, right? We're going from one Zoom call to another Zoom call to another Zoom call. I love you. I can always find time to eat. <laughs> like that's television. never been a problem. <laughs> More like television, and that's why I love that. And look at people tagging. I just love Terry's tagging people. This really will make a difference. Looking forward to learning about good tweets, says Courtney. And it is great to have you all here. Uh, Marcy says, is great. Uh, Mick says, Marcy is writing a great hooks that engage her readers. Awesome. That's a great uh, 
compliment. And Tweeting God, it says, phew, I made it. Apologies for being late. Thank you, Tweeting Goddess. Everybody should follow her. She's Samantha Kelly out in Ireland, and she ha runs courses and just an expert on Twitter, and everybody should follow her. But for today, uh, she's going to maybe share some ideas and, and uh, uh, tag, and if she has some of her tweets, we'll pull them up and show them here as well. And Twyla is biased because she's voting for an entirely different candidate, Chase, her dog, and... Uh, and Tara, which is, who's our dog. And if you're looking for a nice Thai solution, check out Pak Thai, Nickel by Nicholas Hall. So I'll have to check what that is. And Tweeting Goddess says, thank you for the mention. And we have to do a whole Ireland episode uh, soon, Samantha. Thank you for being here. Let's go back into the feed and look at Susan's uh, tweet. Uh, let's look at a couple of things very quickly. Uh, this is, you played the game of the My Decade where you explained what happened in your in your decade. Uh, and then let's go down and look at a couple of tweets here. Um, you retweeted Andrew Cuomo, and then you retweeted Brian Stelter. Talk about the thinking through both of those. Well, I'm um, I'm of the school that we need to be like showcasing what we're learning through this pandemic. And, you know, I, I, um, I have found Cuomo's briefings to be um, very, uh, I don't want to say soothing to the soul, but just real, you know, it's, it, it and, and, uh, and just laying it out exactly as, as it is happening. And so I wanted to share what he said today, because I thought it just, it was vulnerability. Um, and I just, you know, I, I don't find myself some, you know, thinking deeply about some of the things I share, but it caught my eye. And it said, we are going through hell. When this is all over, I want people to say we went through hell, but we learned lessons and we built a better society because of it. I mean, those are powerful words. And, uh, you know, the, the, the interesting um, point on Brian Stelter's is I'm a big supporter of women. I uh, have funded 15 angel um, startups, but only women led because so little of venture capital goes to women led startups and especially women of color. Um, and Brian made the point that the um, kind of new generation of journalists who are attending the White House briefings are pushing back. And interestingly enough, most of them are women. So that is that was, I found very um, impactful and I wanted to share. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, great observation. And I think it speaks a lot about what's happening in the world now. And uh, we're seeing those Twitter moments, right? Things that have happened in the White House, uh, in that briefing room, and they pop out and then the whole world sees them so fast. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk a little cautionary things. Uh, uh, can, I, can I address my pin tweet though? Yes, just for please. a moment, do you sure. mind? Sure. Um, because I did, you know, it. yes, it was a game, but I almost did this as an exercise for myself to actually feel like you know, because we always beat ourselves up, right? I, I, I don't know. I spend much more time criticizing myself than picking myself up. And I, um, on New Year's is always a very difficult time for me because my mother was killed when I was 20 on New Year's Eve. And so a lot of people are out celebrating on New Year's and I'm oftentimes very much self-reflective. So I found this to be a really good exercise to actually sit back and realize, wow, in the last 10 years, I've done a lot of shit, a lot of good shit. And I felt really positive. And it was the first time on that specific day, December 31st, every year, I actually felt like peace. So, um, you know, the way Marcy was sharing her bit about, like, this is herself. This is me to a T. So, yeah, forgive me for... Uh, no, I love it. I love it. I, and and I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your mother. And, yeah. uh, and uh, thank you for sharing that. And I know... It's not easy to even write about ourselves, right? Uh, some people, it's very easy, but for others, it takes effort and thoughtfulness, and that's what you did by writing that out. Thank you. And folks, tell us where you're watching from. Tell us what questions you have. There's a chance to ask two experts as part of my series, Work on Something, and we're going to do ones on podcasts, and we're going to do one, uh, Marcy uh, suggested one about Instagram, and we'll do one about Canva and uh, design work and YouTube, and so we've got lots of things cooking so please do uh, let us know if you have ideas or questions. Uh, uh, well, Nicholas has ideas. Uh, he's using this platform to talk about uh, the importance of reducing, reusing, and recycling for the planet. That's a good tweet in it right there. And Susan Sawyer says, hey, thank you. And Mark's watching from- We all know her. You we all love her. Susan. We all love her. 
Yeah, she's amazing. She's from Pound Ridge, land of quest love, she says. Oh, so, that's where right? Teresa's from, too. <laughs> Uh, awesome. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, some aspects of Twitter where I think people could spend more time and more energy. And uh, you do you have a great uh, example? Of that here. No, you have a great example of that. So I look at multiple places for branding on Twitter, and the first place is obviously your name and making it obviously spelled correctly. You won't believe how many people mush together there name, not their handle, right? Their name, they mush it together because they think it's like their handle. So separate it out so people can find you. And then your handle. Those are both important ways that people find you. And we we heard of the Hey Marcy story and Susan can, I guess it can be her, Susan and then MCP. And well, that's because there was a Susan McPherson that wouldn't give up her name. <laughs> yes, so. and now you own it. Now she regrets <laughs> that she, she's now the other uh, Susan McPherson. And then look at that. Your what you say about yourself really matters. And here she's being clear and crystal clear. Passionate connector who believes biz can be a force for good. CSR leader, entrepreneur, investor, writer, philanthropist. And then she gives her Instagram link, and she puts the pronoun that she prefers. And then she has a link to her business. And now I've learned that her birthday is three days after mine. Well, many decades later, I'm sure. <laughs> I and, don't think so. <laughs> and uh, it's just perfect. That's just the way you want to think about how you put together your Twitter profile. Mm -hmm. And she has a nice photograph. Uh, you know, she's interested in the planet. She's interested in photography. She's interested in the melting ice caps, right? All of that story is told in that one photograph. So thinking about that and then having a nice, clear picture of you, that also matters. A lot of people have like pictures that are vague and not so clear. One of my mantras that I keep saying is, I learned from John Huey who ran Time Inc. He said, clear is the new clever and be as clear as you can when you do this. So now let's go over uh, to the Hey Marcy account and let's look again at how she has done this. Writing, speaking, thinking on future of work, encore careers slash careers and living gen to gen, dabbling in Instagram, same handle, vponcore.org, use my own. And this just like really put together so well. She's also got a dog in there. You can't go wrong with Sinatra. Click bait, click bait. Yeah, exactly, and a nice photograph. Just look at that entire package that has been put together. And that's really important. And then look what Twitter is showing on the side, right? Joyce, uh, Susan Joyce, I might wanna follow her because she's got content like yours or whatever, right? Like that's, this is, the whole thing, folks, people have seconds to decide whether to follow you or not. And that's where they will decide based on what they see of you. So be as clear as you can on these certain kinds of aspects of, of, of Twitter. So that's really important. Let's just move over to mine and you folks can also critique it as you like. Uh, uh, whoops. Uh, well, let me show you Rose Horowitz, our producer who might join us in a few minutes and you'll get a chance to say hello to her. Uh, and look, she's a journalist, founder of Women to Follow, content, uh, social media producer, and then she talks. She's, she says she's a producer on my show, which I'm so proud of. And then she's been published in the New York Times, Forbes, L.A. Times, Poet, Gardner. Look how much she got in there, folks. Yeah. You can really cram it in with a lot. Of and she has a beautiful banner where she says Women to Follow, and she'll explain that. I hope when she joins us in a few minutes. And this is the magic of Twitter, where you can really paint the picture that you want people to know. Sure, they can find other stuff about you on Facebook, find other stuff about you on LinkedIn, but this is where the action is. This is where journalists are. This is where the media people are. I am still to this day amazed how many people are finding Twitter difficult because it is difficult. One of the founders of Twitter said he was surprised how tw successful Twitter is considering how complicated it is to use. <laughs> like That's one of the frustrating parts of Twitter that it is hard to use. Go ahead. You know, it's kind of like a new language at the beginning. And I think that's something I always, I often tell people when you're getting started on Twitter, spend, um, spend a good amount of time just watching Twitter before dipping in. Find some people uh, you know, or you like to follow, or you're interested in who are public figures, and, and kind of see 
there's a there's shorthand. There's uh, interesting ways that people speak and behave on Twitter that only exist on Twitter. So obviously, some of the tutorials that have been shared here will be great to introduce you to the lingo and the way it works. But I always tell people take a little time before you start sending out your own tweets. Um, it, it, it's definitely uh, something to dip into, I think, with some thoughtfulness. And I think if you're not a, a journalist or a media person or someone who uses Twitter for your job, you could also just be using Twitter to learn and to uh, follow public figures and to follow the news or to go down any rabbit hole of interest that you have, geographical interests or subject matter. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there's a lot of ways to use Twitter, even if you're not out there kind of sharing information with others. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. And uh, I, I want to show you like one of the best ways to use Twitter is to go and find a Twitter guide. And I don't mean a person. You can just go on Twitter. And the first thing that shows up on Google, as you can see, is help.twitter.com's Twitter guide. It is really well done, as you can imagine, not a surprise there. And they have very easy to follow ways of tweet, retweet, follow, search, hashtag. It's very simple, very clear. You can go in and read it. And the other guide that's also great is the number two link on there, which is critical tips for new users from, yeah. from our folks at yep. Wired Magazine and the Wired website. So these are just the two things you need. You don't need me to send you anything. Just Google those two. Those first two things itself will help you. But you also have in the Facebook feed, you have the post that was shared by Big Green Pen, Paula Kiger. And I think you'll find that, uh, you'll find that helpful. Uh, let's see some of the comments that have come in. Carla says, retweet or retweet with comment. My idea always is whenever you can, retweet with comment so that people know why you're doing it unless you really think the tweet stands for itself and stands by itself this is a battle that's over folks when the president retweets without comment and retweets fire fauci that means that's what is it's an endorsement so whenever we say retweets are not an endorsement i wrote a whole piece in the washington post about this because i care so much about this no one's going to read your let's say you retweet a racist to, to show they are racist no one's going to read that, oh, and say, my God, John isn't really racist, is he? And goes into their bio and says, oh, thank God. He says retweets, not endorsements. No one's going to do that. When the president retweets a racist, it's because he is a racist and he endorses racism. We've seen it a thousand times that he has done that. So just to be clear, that's how I approach it. It's not a political statement. It's no. a statement that just says how Twitter is used. So if you want any sort of nuance, subtlety, endorsement, non-endorsement, use retweet with comment and say why you are retweeting that. Or, or it's just like, you know, you have in the office, you'll have someone who forwards you an article and then you're wondering, why did you send it? Shouldn't you, isn't it better when it says third paragraph, that's the restaurant we were talking about at dinner last week, right? Content mm -hmm. makes such a difference. That's why retweet with comment is basically retweet with context. And that's why I love that. Let's get some more questions in, and then we're going to, I have a quite couple of questions for you folks. Can I just make a, a quick comment? Um, you know, Marcy, you address that fear that people have when they're first getting on. And I want to just say, when you first get on, no one's following you. So if you say something stupid, it doesn't matter. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if a tree falls in the woods when nobody's there. So to me, it's like the most important thing is just get on and try it. Um, and then obviously use the hashtags to find your your peeps, you know, the people that would be interested in the same type of thing, just to get over that fear. And there's nothing better than than reaching out and complimenting people on the platform, because just spreading goodness can't hurt. You're not going to anger anybody by saying, wow, that was really interesting what you shared. Yeah. Also, some people are more accessible on Twitter than in other mediums. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I used to I used to have a blog for the New York Times and I met so many people because they wrote to me on Twitter and I wrote back to them. And if they had sent me an email, I would have also responded, but it, I'm drowning in email and I'm not drowning in, e in right. Twitter messages. Not yet. We're about to change that. Everybody <laughs> go. <laughs> and Your says, energy is incredible. Oh my God. Is there a bottle it? Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, Blue Bottle Coffee, they could endorse me. There we go. Is there, <laughs> is there any data on whether Twitter increases print or digital book sales? This can apply to ticket sales. It can apply to listener downloads. I will say that what Twitter does is not the 
not the kind, same thing that we expect on many other platforms where people are engaged and having longer conversations. Twitter is people are kind of flying, things are flying by, and so it leaves an impression rather than an action necessarily. Of course, you can get people to take action. We have seen some beautiful newsletters that work really well. They promote the heck out of it on Twitter, and people download and see it. So Twitter is, you know, there's it's a fire hose. You keep hearing that word, and so it's a fire hose. But you'll 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 get wet along the way. Can you tell each of the flavors of the juice that was sprayed on you? Probably not. And so that's the approach. If you if you if you won't you won't be disappointed if you start with the premise that Twitter is for getting my name out there, getting my stuff into the mix of things, rather than being one tweet means a hundred sales. If you go if you start with that impression, you're going to have problems. Let me ask each of you on that question. Oh, I don't have anything to add, Shri. I think that's, okay. that's spot on. All right. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm confused. Can you repeat the question? No, no. The question was, can you get people to take action? Can you sell books? Can you sell digital books on Twitter versus any other platform? I, d I can't address the specific digital book component. Um, I can address the notion of fundraising on Twitter um, because it, it, it it to me you're asking somebody for money on twitter when you don't have a relationship with them is a little bit like asking for sex on the first date and mm -hmm. you need to actually um i mean some people it's totally fine so if you do that mm -hmm. that's great but you 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 would need to have a more intimate relationship with someone to ask for money um so mm -hmm. to me, it's more use twitter to get to know each other use twitter to explain the cause and the advocacy and why the cause you um, stand for is so vitally important. And then go to a more intimate platform to be able to fundraise. Um, so in terms of, of a, a direct action from a tweet. Did we lose three? We might have. I tell all my clients. <laughs> oh, he's back. He's back. Okay. I, I tell all my clients that we want to make sure that uh, Twitter is something you consider, doesn't yeah. mean it's something you have to do. And yeah. you have to be, especially if you're wanting to connect with journalists, politicians, uh, do-gooders, they're all on Twitter. And so there's that, you know, that that connection channel is, is very strong there. Let's keep going because we only have a few minutes and we have a lot of questions and comments coming in. Uh, let's see, um, uh, Diane says, uh, how does one become verified? This is a big sore point on Twitter. For a long time, I wasn't verified, and that was the best thing that happened to me because then whenever anybody asked, I could say, look, I'm not verified. And then some students of mine started a campaign that I needed to get verified. Oh. And it happened. So, uh, so obviously, I'm happy. It's better to be verified than not, but I have a couple of uh, suggestions for you. Number one, uh, what has happened is that Twitter has done a, you had a problem with its tw verification process. It was verifying. It was just trying to say this person is who they say they are, but that person may have been a terrible person. And so people started looking at it as an endorsement because Twitter said this, let's make that up, you know, this uh, racist is who he says he is. And that became a problem because there are a lot of good people who are not getting verified. So that, that became part of the problem. So they just put it on hiatus. And now the only people there, uh, they, are, they said they're reconsidering the program and all of that, and it's been several years. I believe that uh, what their their plan is to, at least for present, verify only people who are politicians who are running against politicians who are verified, mm. so that that's a fairness. Wow. Uh, mm. uh, that's what I see, and I've all the new verifications are all around politics or uh, people like that. That's that's one of the things I have seen. So it's not a it's not a happy answer, but that's what it is. Um, and Vandana is, is, is quoting uh, Susan on the tweets, but you can see it's a long Facebook post. So I'm pulling that off. But you're going to meet Vandana in a moment because she's going to come here and say hello. Mark says, how do you stop the Twitter overload when following a lot of people? Perfect. And this is what Marcy wanted me to talk about. She said, make sure you talk about Twitter lists. And so I'm going to just very quickly go in and show you how Twitter lists work. And what they are is a way to avoid that fire hose part of the equation. So first, let me show you my uh, quick Twitter bio. You've all uh, probably seen it at some point, if, if I know you. Um, and I'm trying to get a lot of information into my cover shot there, as you can see, into my uh, header. And I need to work on that. And Shristi is helping me. 
I also have my full birth date on display, which I didn't mean to at first, but I'm turning 50. So I sent out birthday invitations a year in advance, which was not smart. So now we may not have a 50th birthday uh, celebration. <laughs> but look how active you can make your, uh, you can make your, your uh, bio, right? Look how much information you can pack into it. And by making each of those things blue, right? You're teaching Twitter who you are and what you're interested in. And that's why that's so important to see what, who and what Twitter is recommending. And then the pin tweet and then all the other stuff we talked about. And then we said specifically, we'll show you how the lists work. So when you go on here, um, there is a place where you can see the list that I have, I have created. And uh, let's see here, uh, they, you know, they keep moving these things around. Hold on one second. And when you're looking at my profile, I uh, think this is, yeah, here we go. The lists are here. And oh, this is another thing that I'll just say very quickly that might confuse some people, why I have my hashtag in my name. And the reason you do that is you do that for conferences. It's really effective way at conference time to do that because then Twitter will serve you up first. When anybody searches for a conference like South by Southwest, if you have your Twitter name includes your, ha your hashtag, then you will come up very high in the search. So that's a trick that you can do. And also, um, and then I told you, I'll tell you about lists. And lists are a great way to start filtering and looking at certain things that you care about and you want to see. And I have made, as you can see, lots of lists. You can wow. you see, I, have, I have hundreds of lists. So for example, I have a Holland tweets list. So if I'm going to uh, to uh, the Netherlands, I hit that and boom, all my Holland friends are there. My Chicago sweeps, if there is a bombing, God forbid, in Chicago, I hit that and I get only the Chicago news. So thinking in those terms really helps you when you're trying to find, uh, find these. So you can find anybody's public lists or their private lists and look at them and learn, uh, learn from them. So I encourage you to do that as you're looking at, listen, there, there's so many here, but I'm just trying to find a couple of ones that might be of interest to you. I have a closed one called A1, which is when I'm in a rush, I only have 10 minutes. Those are the one people I go in to look at. I only have 10 minutes. I have museum folks on Twitter, met museum folks on Twitter, and then I'm proud of this one, effective Twitter bios. I had mm -hmm. 3,500 people that I, I had I, who have effective Twitter bios. So that is like a school, a classroom on how to make an effective bio. And 223 people have subscribed to it so that if they want to look at an effective bio, they can do that. Or if I, I have a section called tweeting CEOs. So when the stock market's melting, I can just go down and look at what are CEOs saying today. So this is a really effective way to listen on Twitter. So let me pause there and uh, see if Marcy or uh, Susan have any comments on that. Well, I do the the the, the A list. I do also, and I try to keep my. I do a lot of housekeeping on my A list because when I'm in a rush, I want to just get on Twitter, and I I'm, I also want to make sure that if I have really good friends on Twitter, that I'm not missing what they tweet about. So sometimes, because someone tweets an awful lot, you you may not be seeing all the tweets of people you really care about. So I try to keep that. I have a triple A list now. The A list is my kind of general maintenance list. And then the triple A are like my closest people. I try to keep that to under 50 people, people like I'd never want to miss one of their tweets. And when you start to, to follow quite a lot of people, that is what happens. Uh, when I want news, sometimes I, I highlight just newsmakers and journalists that I trust because I'm trying to get the news from trusted news sources. But sometimes I want to go to, to Twitter for more general experience of what's happening in the moment, a little more zeitgeisty feeling. So it kind of depends on what you're using Twitter for in that moment. But I love the travel idea when you're going to a place to think about who are your trusted sources from that place and people you want to keep up with. I'm, so I'm going to start doing that also once we travel. Okay, once we travel, right? Uh, here's, here's a great tip from Samantha. And I'm just so grateful. She's at Tweeting Goddess, so you have to listen to her. Best Twitter tip, be kind, assist others, share your knowledge. When you look mm -hmm. at your profile, think, would I follow me? What a brilliant way to look at this, right? Like this is one of the big problems we all have is that we're all like sharing, posting, et cetera. Do, will people want to follow us is a question that you can ask. 
and people will uh, we will benefit you. Laura says powerful bio rows. Uh, also interested in Canva, so pretty. Uh, what is the right amount to spend uh, time on a tweet? Yes, <laughs> I spend three to five to seven to ten minutes on a tweet because wow. it's the only thing I do today that will get archived permanently. It's the only thing I do today that can get me fired today, get me divorced today. So I'm super careful <laughs> and. I always look at every tweet as if it was my final tweet. If I get hit mm. by a bus tomorrow, uh, what will my last tweet say? Mm. When you look at uh, when you look at the great um, uh, uh, the great actor Le Le Leonard Nimoy, who played Doctor Spock, he had something wonderful about gardens and the universe, and we're all connected. It was a beautiful final tweet. I'm not going to be able to go out like that. So I write every tweet and look at it and say, is it whiny? Is it angry? Is that what I want? to be in the, my final tweet because people do collect final tweets and post them. Mm -hmm. So I think about that. You know, I don't want to say, oh, the buses in New York are really slow. What idiots? And then get hit by that bus. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm always <laughs> thinking in, in that way. Mark says, I found Twitter a great tool to reach guests and celebrities. Marina Sirtis is an amazing tweet person. Guys, keep sharing, keep posting on here. Uh, I don't like when someone has on their profiles retweets are so are not endorsements so annoying. I like that. Susan says, curious to know which platform your viewers are using. Does either platform screen for truth? The probable answer to that is no. And uh, let's let's get some more of the questions in here. Disclaimer in your tweet bio is legally meaningless too. Excellent point. He's at SF Doug. Follow him, folks, uh, and keep sharing your links. I'm going to bring in our one of our producers, Vandana Menon, who has been. Uh, uh, watching and tweeting for several, she's been 49, 39 days has been live tweeting us. So wow. hi, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Uh, thank you. And tell me uh, what it's been like to live tweet so many days. What have you learned in 39 days of live tweeting? I think I've gotten better at knowing exactly what quote to live tweet. Um, and like, I think I've got gotten better. Yeah, I know when someone's going to say something that um, mm -hmm. should be tweeted. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 really great. Rose says, check out women to follow list on Twitter from Hey Kiddo. That's a great list, and you will learn a lot. Uh, Twitter tip: use the AA slogan, think, think, think before you tweet. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Aldo says, I give the tweet 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 three hours, then I get up and take a walk, yeah. uh, uh, and. <laughs> One of the one of the things that I object to, by the way, is journalists auto deleting their tweets. I don't know if you've noticed this. This has become a thing where we they say, "Oh, people are going to go after us." It's not, you know, if you're a 17 year old and you're going to be held liable for things you said when you're 54. I mean, when you're 54, what you said 17 is a different thing. But journalists should be transparent and public and mm -hmm. stand by what you say. That is my belief. This is not. There's no rules around this but I don't like auto-deleting of tweets, which has become a thing, unfortunately. Uh, Arlene said, we must have a celebration That's of the 50th me. birthday. And uh, Steve says, hello. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. I think, and, and Vandana, I have to know what you guys think about um, correcting tweets. So uh, Twitter doesn't have an edit feature the way some other social media uh, platform, and there's always a good question of like how you should edit, a tw uh, correct a mistake. What do you guys, you can delete a tweet, but you can't edit it. What do you all recommend on that? I, I when I find I've made an a, a, like a misspelling or something, I delete the entire tweet and retweet it. Okay, and so that that's your your standard, and I think that's that's fair, especially if it was innocuous, it was a typo, mm -hmm. it was a mistake, yeah. you know, that kind yeah. of tweet. Especially if it's the first like five minutes, ten minutes, things mm -hmm. like that. Beyond that, let's hear Vandana's take. And by the way, it's nice to have someone from another generation uh, <laughs> uh, with yeah. us. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Well, it's free. It's official. I am older than you. By <laughs> well, you don't look it, so that's great. Go ahead, Vandana. Yeah. I, what are these old people talking about? <laughs> no. So at my previous organization, I used to work as a reporter, and um, one of my job, one of the things we had to do was send out the tweets. And I remember having to um, read an entire article and and condense the entire thing into three separate tweets and send it to my editor and make him make sure that he approved it before we were allowed to tweet it. And the rule that we went by there, and and it, th and it honestly, I credit all of my training to him because he, managed, he, he was so good at getting us to um, bring everything down into one tweet. And we were not allowed to make any mistake. We had to translate the entire essence perfectly. 
and uh, mm. the we went by was in the first three minutes. If there's a mistake, then tweet, then delete it. Otherwise, don't delete it. Issue an update. Issue a correction. Wow. Very good. Very good. On, the, uh, Vandana, on the tweet or in a new tweet? In a new tweet. Uh, okay. Let's ask Vandana another question. Your generation, you just graduated college, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, grad school. You just finished grad school. Uh, how how what is their attitudes towards Twitter versus say Snap and Insta and Facebook? I was actually thinking about that when, when while watching um, this live. So I joined Twitter for completely different reasons. I, it was just another social media platform for me to talk to my friends too, you know. And it was just a way for me to keep tabs on celebrities and see what people were up to. And then it's only yeah. over the last couple of years that it's um, become the, a main source of news and a main so because it somehow streamlines um, your interests in a better way than other social media platforms. So I think so Twitter, in my opinion, and um, at least this is how I see these social media platforms, Twitter is more like for intellectual engagement and for like quick hot takes. So you go there for the humor, you go there for like interesting quirky stories, you go there for like... <laughs> hey, this could be my mask. A nice time, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so that's what Twitter is for. It's just it's just the really quick um, hot takes. Uh, that's that's great. Steve also has a tip in here, folks. We're really out of time, and we could have kept going. Yeah, I, I, I think to, we need yeah. to do this again, uh, uh, and, you know, and maybe more advanced tips the next time. But we're learning. This is our series. Work on something, and we want you to work on your Twitter. We're going to have more. Please send me feedback. Sri at Sri .net is my email address. We want to hear from you. Please tweet at me at Sri. We want suggestions for speakers, topics, and of course, donors, uh, sponsors as well. And uh, let's have each of our speakers give us a final thought and we'll say goodbye. We'll start with Vandana Menon, who is our producer and stepped in here just to bring down our average age by, me, by many, <laughs> a couple of years. A couple of years. <laughs> Thank you. I learned a lot. Um, I don't have a pin tweet right now. That's something I need to correct. That's something she has actually told me about before, and I recently unpinned a tweet, so I'm going to go rectify that. But thank you so much. I've done quite a bit, and um, yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Okay, thank you, Vandana, and we'll see you soon. Bye. All right, let's go to Susan McPherson. Uh, please tell us your final thoughts for now. Um, I would say don't take yourself so seriously and have fun. Okay, because it, if you if you almost smile while you're typing a tweet, you chances are you won't offend somebody, or at least we hope not. So that would be my suggestion. And be kind, just be kind. We, we don't need vitriol in this world right now or anytime. Uh, I, I appreciate that. And uh, we we'll just want to say bye to Susan. She's Susan MCP1 on Twitter. So please follow her. Thank you, Susan. Goodbye. You're fabulous. And, oh, and so are you. Bye, honey. Bye, guys. And happy early birthday. And thank you to this amazing audience. I'm, I'm just blown away by, by their enthusiasm. Thank you. See you soon. And over to you, Marcy. I just want to show you while you're dealing with two generations, how about Maureen, who is a student? who is a guest of ours who's dealing with a closed group Yay. for sixth graders. So that's, that's Yay, another generation. Yeah. So go ahead, uh, your, your, your thoughts. I, I think the last thing I was gonna say is, um, you know, when uh, Susan talked about a dinner party, I have made real friends on Twitter and I encourage you to do that too. Um, I have, uh, I love it when somebody starts to follow me and then um, I write them, then you can direct message each other and I, I thank new followers and get to know them and check out their their tweets and often we, um, we really uh, get to know each other that way and I've had several Twitter relationships that have gone to in real life so I also believe once you find people that you really connect with, it's just like another wonderful way uh, to form new relationships. Yeah, thank you. And you're awesome, Marcy. You made this happen. You just messaged it, and here we Thanks are. Thanks for accommodating. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Uh, yeah, please, follow, my mom. Okay. <laughs> and please follow Hey Marcy on Twitter. She's amazing. And find her two books. Uh, I'm sure she has more on her way. Uh, and check her out. Mar Marcy Alboher, A L B O H E R. Thank you so much. And we'll say goodbye to her. And I'll give. I'll do my usual uh, uh, final thoughts. Thanks very much, Marcy. Thanks so much. All right, that was amazing. I'm so grateful to everybody who tuned in. I'm sorry we didn't get to all the questions with so many questions. And uh, we want to do more of this. Please give me feedback. Please 
Email me, three at three.net. Please tag me, please share. Look at all these great comments coming in from folks. Thanks for all your time. Uh, thank you, says Rebecca. Frederick has got a very early FN account. That's amazing. Thank you, this was great. Um, Maureen, my answer to dealing with closed groups for, um, for sixth graders is to make sure if they're in a closed DM group, that's the way to do it. Jonathan says, great programming. Uh, suggestions for getting my Twitter in shape. Uh, yes, have fun. Uh, agrees Aldo uh, and so many people here. Great insights. Thank you all. One of the things you should do, if you have a business card, make sure you put in your Twitter handle in your business card, in your email signature file. Make sure it is everywhere so that people can find you. So uh, as we say goodbye here, I want to remind you to follow all these great people on Twitter. And I have an amazing lineup of shows coming up. Today is Monday. You're watching a recording, that's great. Tuesday at 7 p.m., doctors, doctors, doctors. We're gonna to talk to more doctors at 7 p.m. Eastern. On Wednesday, we're gonna to talk to the former ambassador of the United States to India, Richard Verma, who happens to be Indian American. He's gonna give us a really good insight into what's happening around the world. And then we've got the, uh, the social media team, the killer social media team at the International Red Cross and Red Crescent. They're gonna come in, it's very early, 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, Wednesday's noon. So we're going to 4, 7, noon, 9 a.m. And then on Friday night, we're doing dating, relationships, and love in the age of COVID with the CEO and director of the amazing Kinsey Institute and with the Wall Street Journal's uh, relationships columnist who just written an article, Elizabeth Bernstein, about relationships and love during COVID-19. So that's that's just this week, folks. Uh, we are so grateful to everybody who joins us. We want to thank our amazing sponsor. And uh, here is the Girl Scouts of New York. They do an amazing job, of course, already. We know that. But we also have, uh, uh, they're trying to donate 10,000 boxes of cookies to healthcare workers. Please go there. If you found the show helpful in any way, please go to bit.ly slash gscookies1, bit.ly slash gscookies1, and make a donation. Even one box will help brighten up the day of a healthcare worker and help the Girl Scouts and help this show. So please go. The ad was paid for by a third party donor. I'm so grateful. So you can make a donation like that. You can support this show in that way. If you have an ad you'd like to run, look how inexpensive these are. Email me, sri at sri.net. Uh, we've heard multiple times from Tim Sohn that my sponsorships work, and I'm so grateful to him for doing that. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I'm going to go run to another show my team is putting together, uh, a show that's celebrating the life of uh, and the story around the Holocaust. Uh, it's obviously the tragedy of the Holocaust, but celebrating the lives of people who were who perished in the Holocaust. So uh, please uh, stay safe out there. Please send me suggestions and topics. Email me, three at three.net, S-R-E-E at sree.net. Thanks very much, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.